Open your Bibles with me once again this evening to 1 John chapter 4. God's plan is bigger than your past. Manifested love is a manifestation of Jesus. And when Jesus said, I'll manifest myself to him, you remember he's talking about love. He said, he that loves me, he that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me. Oh no, it's very simple. The one that listens and does what I tell you to do. He's the one that loves me. Well, I love Jesus. Really? Well, then you must be doing that. Well, yeah, when I can. No, see, that's not love. That's convenience. Love. When, you're, when you practice His presence, and that, when we love one another, what, what, what are we reading? We're going to see it again here in 1 John. When, when we love one another, when we practice that commandment, when we do it just because it's a command of His, He said it, then that's more than enough for me. I love Him with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, all my strength, all I have or ever will have. I, I, I love Him. And whatever he says, whatever, he, he just thinks of something he'd just like to do. That's a command to me. Amen. Amen. I'm that way over Gloria. We do our best to meet one another's desires. And, and, but why? Because we're so much in love with one another. This thing has grown for 52 years. And it's get, it, you know what? It, is, it, it went far, a long time ago, far beyond anything I knew that was available in married life. Glory to God. And so from here on out, it's all new territory, brother. Praise God. And it's wonderful. Amen. Now, to do what he said, he that hath my commandments must be listening. Yes. Right? Or he, or he wouldn't have heard him in the first place. No. He that hath my commandments, John, let's just turn over there, John 14, 21. Don't lose your place in 1 John because we're going there. Verse 21, 14, 21. He that hath my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. So that's the earmark of the person that is actively loving God. You're listening for His command, for His plan, because you're committed to Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, and He does it. He it is that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him the Amplified Translation says, I will make myself clearly seen and clearly known by him. So when you're, when you're committed to obey, it gets clearer and more clear and more clear day by day by day by day. Now then, that we've, we, we've come to this. Jesus manifesting himself is what? He it is that loves me. I will love him and manifest myself to him that loves me. Can you see that love is the motive? Love is the perfect. Love is the, the, the perfect outcome of this relationship. So if it's a manifestation of Jesus, it's a manifestation of God. Yeah. If it's a manifestation of God, it's a manifestation of love. Amen. Because God is love, right? All right, let's go over there then now to 1 John. 1 John chapter 4. Now then, in verse 16, 
Verse, verse 15 first. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwelleth in God. So we have known, and as we pointed out earlier, that word known is used here the way it's used in other places, and a man knew his wife. It, it's talking about a relationship here, a very intimate relationship. We have, if you're born again, if, if you, you have made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life and you know it, how many of you have done that? You, you, I, oh yeah, do you know what? You have known the love of God. Oh yeah, because that's what did it. Amen, it was love that went to the cross. It was love that raised him from the dead. It was love that came on the day of Pentecost. It was love that hovered over your body and a holy thing was conceived in you and old things passed away and all things became new and all things were of God who is love. And the love of God was shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost who is love. Amen. Amen. The love wherewith God loved Jesus. Jesus prayed this, 17th chapter of John. He said, show the world that you love them as much as you do me. That's staggering. Amen. Amen. But then he said, and the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them. So the very love with which God loved Jesus has been imparted into your and my spirit with which to love him and to love one another. Yeah. Now can you see the root behind the command, believe on the name of his son Jesus and love one another even as I gave commandment. Because right here in 1 John, we're going to see here in a moment, he said, as we love one another, his love in us is perfected. So he put the love in there, and then he commanded us to use it. Isn't that good? So there wasn't no doubt about whether we're going to do it or not. This is not a good suggestion. This is not something we're supposed to try. No, no, this is something that we do, do or die. I mean, this is it, brother. This is the commandment. It satisfies all the other commandments. It is done thing. Every born again believer is under command to use the very love of God. And think about what a command that is. That's like the command to tithe. A command to tithe is a command to be blessed beyond your imagination. Amen. And it, and it, it, it is such a huge desire of his, he just ordered you to do it. He has ordered us to love. Love has ordered us to love. This is good. <laughs> Glory. Why? Because the more we do, the more the, his love is perfected in us. The more it grows, the bigger it gets, the stronger it gets, and the bigger it gets, then the stronger it gets, and the stronger it gets, the bigger it gets, and the more we love, the bigger it, and, and oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Sickness and disease can't live in that kind of environment. No, how, and, and how does this come about? He that has my commandments does them. He it is that loves me. He it is that loves me. I told him to love one another and he's doing it. And he it is that loves me. And so is the other one that of which he is loving, is loving back and he's love. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> this thing get huge in, in seconds. You know why? It's God, my brother. 
my sister. This is God in us. Our hope of glory. Oh, my, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. Now then, believe the love. We've known it. Now believe it. Believe the love. What <clears throat> was the major problem in the wilderness? They did not believe he loved them. He sent us out here to kill us. We're going to die in this desert. We're going to die. Desert. We're going to die in this desert. We're going to die in this desert. They died in that desert. <laughs> Amen. Didn't believe it. Did, and, and I have learned this and just bit by being observant over the years. Not only in, in my own life and walking in the scripture says, if you judge yourself, you'll not be judged with the world. And, and I'm, I noticed in myself, particularly in years gone by, that that had to be dealt with. That God loves me. He loves me. He don't love me just when I'm free of sin. He loves me all the time. All the time, all the time, every morning, every night, day in, day out, God loves me. Hallelujah. And the more I practice that, and the scripture says, awake unto righteousness and sin not. We've not been given a spirit of fear, but we've been given a spirit of power and what else? Love and a sound mind. Perfected love casteth out fear. Glory to God. So the more we obey, the more he manifests himself, the more he manifests himself, the less fear we have. And absolutely refuse to be led by fear. No, 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 no. Not going to happen. Just not going to happen. No, nope. I keep the commandment of God. Now then, let's read from verse or from chapter five. First John chapter five. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. May I see your hand if you believe Jesus is the Christ? Hold it up there. Now, say this: I believe Jesus is the Christ. I. Believe Jesus is the Christ. I I'm born of God. I am born of God. I don't ever let any devil even suggest to you any different. There's the evidence right there. Thank you, Lord. Um, may, I, may I demonstrate a New Testament truth to you right now? Um, I need a bottle of water and I need a, an empty glass, please. Well, here's, here we go. Here we go. I can do it with what I got right here, Barry. Thank you. Let me get the rug a little wet. <laughs> but the staff is on my side now. <laughs> I'm on that side. Under the old covenant, nobody was born again. And so the Holy Spirit to be for the Holy Spirit to be on someone. It came like that. <coughs> Barry, I'm going to need some more water. <laughs> I 
I don't care if you bring the pitcher, bring a, bring the. I got one out here, slow poke. <laughs> Come out of here, David, you can hear me. Now, remember now, and, and the glory or any other spiritual force. Don't drink it up. Uh, okay. The man of more than enough. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, wait a minute. Now, the same thing with the glory or any other spiritual force from God. The angels, you remember Jacob's ladder? The angels were going to and fro. That's no longer the case. The noise on the day of Pentecost, it was not a rushing mighty wind. It was the sound as a rushing mighty wind. When the Holy Spirit and all of the angels that had to leave this atmosphere when Adam gave it away came back. On the day of Pentecost, I am totally convinced that's what they heard. It was the Spirit of God and all those angels. Whew. Amen. Amen. So the difference now is in the New Testament, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Poor, poor. We are poor, poor, poor. Now you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. We're inside out people. The glory is in you. Thank you, Barry. I'm going to Give Mr. Tubbs a hand, please. <laughs> but that, that's a concept that needs to be aware all the time. Because when you're outside in people, you continually pray to God. And the concept is way. And the kingdom of God is way out there. No, Jesus said it's inside. And he is with you and he will be in you. And he was referring about through the day of Pentecost, right? The glory is in here. We will be taking one step of faith right after the other, another step of faith, another step of faith. And there's coming a moment in time. There's coming a place in time where the one step right after the other and the next step, thou. Yes. That glorified body is only one step of faith away. Because that glory does not come from heaven. It's already here. It's already in your spirit. Your spirit is already glorified. Hallelujah. This is the glorious gospel. And the more of that faith of God you have in you, and it works and builds and develops, and you begin to, you remember we read the 17th chapter of John, and God and he said, the glory you have given me, I have given them. It's in here. It's in here. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I am, think about it, wall to wall, Holy Ghost. Walking in the Spirit. What happens when you put those hands on someone? It doesn't come from outside, it comes from inside. Amen. Oh, come on, rejoice with me. My spirit is so full tonight. My spirit is so full tonight.
I grew up denominationally. I was saved. I had been saved for a really long time. And yet, that was all I heard. And that I, I didn't receive any discipleship. And I said, Lord, there's got to be more to you than this. In the meantime, I have had children. And um, I actually just one by this point in time. I had my oldest son and hired a babysitter that I had met at a denominational church that my husband and I were going to. And I began to be a spiritual mentor for her. She went off to college and came back speaking in tongues. And I was mortified, horrified, actually. How, how dare someone take my, you know, mentee or whatever the word would be, how dare they do that and dupe her? And I was intrigued, and yet at the same time, I was furious. And so, because I have two science degrees, I said, I know what I'm going to do. I need to save this girl, but I can't save her until I study both sides. I have wired as a type A personality. And I also have a fear of being duped and had a fear of being wrong. I didn't ever want to be wrong or be manipulated. It was a year and a half long that I studied the scriptures and prayed and read and decided that yes, in fact, that was an option and that's what I should do. But I was so prideful and fearful of this revelation that I'd been given and yet it went against the grain of everything I had been taught. So I was sitting in my denominational church and my pastor was preaching a very edgy sermon on abuse. And he did not talk about it being a generational curse. And yet with my reading, I knew it was. And so I ended up being convicted of the fact that I, I was subject to this particular curse. It was part of me. My mom had been abused by my grandmother and I had had that snap with my own children and it worried me and I got real fearful. But I knew from what I had read that I could be delivered from that. And so I went back to that babysitter and I said, you need to take me to whoever you went to that made you talk in tongues because I need to get rid of this, whatever it is. And so I ended up going, and my youngest son was about a year old at the time, ended up going and um, had hands laid on me and, and literally felt a lifting off of me when I renounced that curse. And then I began to speak in tongues. I had heard the Lord before. I mean, I knew the Lord. I didn't, I had the inner witness, but this was like going from an acoustic guitar to an electric guitar with an amplifier. The difference in the frequency that I heard him and the difference in the volume that I heard him was astounding. It was like, wow, he's talking to me all the time where before it was a, oh, I hope I can catch him. You know, it was a something, I don't know, elusive about him. And it, he was no longer elusive. It was all the time I could hear him. Landis and her family began attending Eagle Mountain International Church. There she learned and received what she had been searching for all along. The great thing, the wonderful thing, is that I found discipleship. I found what I was supposed to do here. You know, I had my salvation, but now I knew how to live today. And it was a huge answer to prayer because I wanted more and I got more. So what I found here was that Kenneth Copeland took me from the milk of the word to the meat of the word. And we are continuing to learn every day and life is full because of it.
Now this week we are celebrating Pentecost, and for those of you who may not know, this was that exciting day when God just poured out His Spirit on the ones who had received Jesus as their Savior. When the Holy Spirit came to fill them, what happened? They began to praise God in other tongues, both in their earthly language and in a heavenly language that they had never learned before. And this is the experience that my grandfather was demonstrating in this message today. When he poured that water into the glass and it began to overflow, that's what happens to us when we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said that the Spirit coming to live in us was like living water that flows out of us and it begins to affect circumstances around us in a very powerful way. And he said that this Spirit is a gift to us, to help us, to guide us, to lead us in our walk with the Lord. And if you've never been filled with the Spirit of God, if you've never been filled to overflowing, then simply say this with me. Just say this. Say, Jesus, I receive the gift of your Holy Spirit. Fill me up to overflowing. Say this. Say, I receive my heavenly language of prayer in Jesus' name. Now just begin to pray and praise the Lord and let Him teach you this new language that comes up out of your heart, out of your mouth, and you are praying in a perfect way. And that, this is why we want to offer this book to you today. Free offer. We want to send this book to you called God's Will is the Holy Spirit by Gloria Copeland. It's going to help you learn more about this gift that you just received. And this is a gift that we want to bless you with. So it's free when you contact us, either by our website or phone. Just let us know you want it. Use the information on your screen and our our announcer will repeat this information at the end of the broadcast. If you receive the Spirit of God today, we want to hear from you. We want to rejoice with you. This is the beginning of a new way of life for you. Thanks so much for watching today. This is Jeremy Pearson's reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Build your faith and be transformed by the Word of God. The Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. Continue your studies with this week's product offer, Order your copy today and let these word-based teachings help you live in victory. Receive God's grace abounding toward you 